Hey guys, what's up? And today I'm going to do another mini albums review. I just used an entire hour to write the script for for this mini albums review. And like seriously, my hands are so broken right now. Uh yeah. Yeah, and and some on here also. Like my hands are so so tired right now. But, you know, I'm doing all this just for reviewing music. So before uh, starting off talking about the main five albums that I want to talk in this review, there are also four albums that I want to talk about but didn't have time to. I think all four of them are pretty meh, you know, pretty underwhelming, but not terrible, not super terrible, but just kinda, kinda underwhelming. Um, so I would give Courtney Barnett's Tell Me How You Feel, a 6 out of 10, the first two singles of this album are killer singles, and uh, Nameless Faceless is one of the best singles of the year in my opinion, but uh, overall the, the rest of the album is pretty average. Royce to 5.9, might as well give a 5.9, you know, eh. <laughs> it's a really inconsistent album, although it has a lot of good potential in it, you know. And that Caterpillar song featuring Eminem, like, the flow is amazing. But the lyrics, like, we're in a war, the Caterpillars are dying. Like, what's going on? Like, like what's going on in here? Uh, J. Cole's new album is really underwhelming. It's really average. Uh, I really don't see the appeal of it. It's, um, yeah, it's quite, it's, it's really nothing. It's really nothing. A 5 out of 10. Also, the new Arctic Monkeys album, Tr Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, uh, also a 5 out of 10. Um, it's like, this album, it, it doesn't have solid music, it's just Alex Turner. Ooh, ooh. I'm gonna put a link in the description that shows you what Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, Casino actually sounds like. But then, yeah, uh, here we go, our four albums, no, not four, five, uh, sorry, uh, Pusha T, ASAP Rocky, Beach House, Mark Kozlek, and B BTS, Bob the Builder. <laughs> you may be thinking, where are the Kanye reviews, where are the, uh, the Kidsy Ghost review? I... I, I'm still in my school exam period, okay? So so I don't have much time. I need time to do revision as well. But eventually, within the month, I will do a review on both Ye and Kitsy Ghost. Anyway, Pusha T's Daytona is, um, is a new Pusha T album. Pusha T is uh, the president of the Kanye West music label, Good Music. And uh, he had a few great albums, he also had a few pretty underwhelming albums. And on this album, Kanye West produced every song on it. And maybe that's one of the reasons why this album is super short. It's this, it's this recent trend sparked by Kanye West to make super short albums around 20 minutes long. And 7 tracks, each Kanye produced album in 2018 is 7 tracks long. This album, Yay, Kitsy Ghost, the new Nas album, Tayana Taylor is also is also Kanye produced and seven tracks long. What Kanye also did for this album is uh, changing the album cover to uh, the, the, the Bathroom of Whitney Houston, which is quite like a controversial and bold move. You know, like, I don't know if it's actually Kanye West who did that or not, but I'm pretty damn sure it's Kanye West, because only Kanye West would do something like that. Uh, anyway, Kanye West's beats on this album are very artsy, luxurious, groovy, and sharp. It's full of soul and jazz samples, and um, the flow of the track list is seamless. It flows really nicely uh, while I'm stuttering here. <laughs> And Pusha T is also pretty great on this album. He has a mid pace flow and every syllable catches your attention. And <laughs> yeah, the album starts off with, if you know, you know. It's a pr it has some pretty sharp and blissful guitars that feels really odd and psychedelic. 
and uh, it's it's a great it's a great beat to be honest. And uh, the hook, if you know, you know, is basically about you know if you have been paying attention to Pusha T, you'll understand him. So yeah, if you know, you know. The next track of the games we play is a really raw and organic track with the chill, crispy guitars and Pusha T's performance and delivery here is like a freestyle. It's pretty cool and I also like the vintage horns on this track. And overall, this track is about drug dealing and uh, the way it's written, it's very impactful in my opinion. The next track, Hard Pianos, it's kind of underrated in my opinion. It's actually really good. I like the pianos which runs deep and it's really calm and uh, the hook is really epic as well Rick Ross's feature on this track is not bad not at all the track comeback baby has some super minimal percussions and Pusha T's flow on this track reminds me a little bit of Nicki Minaj's flow maybe that's why it's a little bit underwhelming but uh, I do really like the soul sample on this thing although it sounds like lazy production but it's kind of catchy not gonna lie the next track santeria it's eerily beautiful and uh, i really like the ghostly instrumentations the hook is chilling and uh, there's a very cool beat switch up and um overall it's a very forlorn groovy track santeria you know i like the spanish in this track as well and then we have what would meek do featuring kanye west himself hi i'm kanye hi uh, it's okay. Kanye can't Con, Kanye West's feature on this track is a little bit goofy and the beat is a little bit dull. Probably a a little bit of a low moment on the album. And then we have Infrared, and um, this is basically a diss track towards Drake, Lil Wayne, and Birdman. And uh, Drake immediately made a duppy freestyle after this track. Wow, like Drake is triggered. Although, like although Pusha T roasted Lil Wayne even more than Drake. But whatever. And I overall, I, I really like the chill and lavishing beat of this track. Not gonna lie. And um, overall, Pusha T is very vicious and impactful on this album. And uh, he has some interesting lines on the album as well. And overall, it's a very watertight and solid album full of pretty good rap tracks. Not gonna lie. The main issue with this album is that it's only seven tracks long. Like, maybe you can add a few more tracks. Uh, yeah, it's that's why it feels a little bit underwhelming before I listen to the album. But, you know, still, it's pretty good quality. I would prefer listening to a short album with high quality than a long album with bad quality. So, yeah, an 8 out of 10. Uh, the worst is what would meet you and the best is... um. Hard pianos. Next up, we have the new ASAP Rocky album testing. Uh, yeah, ASAP Rocky started off his career with some badass mixtapes, and his debut album is pretty good. Uh, and then it goes downhill. It's just, meh. and uh, on this album, like I know it's it's a cloud rap genre, okay? But this album sounds super lost in the woods. It tries to be moody. And it ends up super messy, super sloppy. I don't know what in the fuck is going on. Everything feels so random. Like a cloud rap, a good cloud rap album should be euphoric, intoxicating, and very dreamy, but solid at the same time. But on here, the production is lackluster. The vocals are buried deep into these weird noises and sound effects, which doesn't sound coherent at all. It sounds so loose. There are a few highlights on this album. My favorite track is Praise the Lord featuring Skepta. We have this sharp harmonized Boy Scout flute lead. And Skepta's featuring is amazing. Uh, the flow is very slick as well. The track Buckshot is pretty interesting. Although I still think it's so-so. Uh, it's pretty rainy, pretty moody, a little bit hallucinating. Pretty interesting. I like the digital sound effect Buckshot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the... The last track, Purity, is also pretty cool, featuring Frank Ocean. It's really sweet, very satisfying to the ears. The verses are pretty heartfelt and not a bad ending to the album. The biggest head scratch of the album is Fuck Sleep, featuring FKA Twigs. What the fuck are you doing here? FKA Twigs is... Why are you here? Why? Uh... And on this album, ASAP Rocky sounds half asleep. 
he sounds like he's he's drooling and he's about to pass out. It's it's really a turn off. Wow. And uh, the track ASAP Forever, which is one of the leading up singles. The track ASAP Forever, uh, the music video is pretty dope, but overall it's a really boring and drab song. It sounds like ASAP Rocky's going on forever. Oh my gosh. And then there there are also some other really underwhelming tracks. Changes, Hun 43, 43rd, 43rd, Hun 43rd, what, uh, kids... I forgot the, the 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 title of the track. It's so forgettable. It's so messy. So sloppy. I don't know what is going on. The track "Call Drops" is also another head scratch. Is wow, "Call Drops" is even more confusing than "Fuck Sleep." Like it features Kodak Black, and it is basically this two minute, one minute and a half, like one and a half minute long this ballad. It's not even like a rap track. It's we have these guitars and uh, ASAP Rocky singing in such a deadpan voice. Drop top, like isn't drop tops a Migos line? What the fuck? And Kodak Black randomly pops up at the end of the track, you know. And and Kodak Black is in prison apparently, and his his feature on this track is recorded through a telephone through the prison. So supposedly this should be a really cool track idea. The fusion of guitars, the dreamy sound, the psychedelic sound effects, the uh, the, the new uh, folk-infused direction ASAP Rocky is going for and Kodak Black's feature. But this song just ended up super lame, super underwritten. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And overall, it's a really lackluster album. The auto-tune on this album is really bad. Uh, ASAP Rocky is an awful singer in general. Uh, the flow of this album is is also very, really choppy and spotty. And uh, it feels very clustered. It, it sounds like ASAP Rocky is trying to experiment, but he really failed. So I'm giving a 4 out of 10 for this album. But next up, we have a way better album to talk about. And that is Beach Houses 7. And that is basically their seventh studio album, Baltimore, Dream Pop Duo, their self-titled album, and Teen Dream are great. And then they go downhill with um, Bloom, Depression Cherry, and then another album they released like a couple months after that. Like, I don't know why would someone release two albums that close to each other in terms of time. Like, only King Giz would do something like that. Why? But now they're back with a new producer, I believe, and yes, a, a new direction in sound and musical style is what they really need right now. And this album, it's it's way better. You know, it's dreamy, it's haunting, it's way more textured, it's way more saturated, uh, it's colorful, luxurious, lavishing, luscious, relaxing, crystal clear, polished, very versatile, adventurous, and fun. As well, the album starts off with Dark Spring. Damn, it's a damn good album opener. And it's a very summery, psych uh, album opener. I love the hard-hitting drums and the droney keys on this thing. And uh, the, the chorus or the hook section of the track really brings this psychedelic and nostalgic feel. It's just very vacation mood. And then we have Pay No Mind, which is a super bass-boosted. A cool down slow jam it's very spacey kind of euphoric and it creates this ambient effect as well and uh lemon glow is my favorite i love lemon glow so much uh, i love the slinky since i like the sunburnt fuzzy guitars and uh, the the guitars on on the hook and the chorus they are they are super mind bending and boggling. Like I was listening to this when I when I went to school one day, like I was on the bus and I was listening to it, and I was like looking outside, and when I heard this guitar line, I was like, oh my gosh! I just entered this tunnel of weird light rings. Like this is so cool, man. And then um I love the trippy. Intense instrumentals on this track as well. I 
wow, and the vocal performance, not the vocal performance, the melody of the vocals, they're amazing. And then Drunken LA is a very dramatic, almost apocalyptic pop track that I really enjoy. And the lyrics are very poetic as well, talking about horses going into my mind and all that. The track Dive is also a very nice track. At first, it feels like an interlude. It's very spacey, very washed out. But after the midpoint of the album, it gets way more blissful and heavier. Uh, we get these grinding guitars and these exciting drum beats building up. And uh, wow, what an ending. And Black Car is also one of the highlights of this album. I love the toxic synths. And uh, this track feels very in the moment, very slow very windy it's like um it's like um let me think of a track that sounds that has a similar style it's like radio heads climbing up the walls very in the moment very slow very chill uh the last track last ride is also pretty good but uh the the other than that you know the second half of the album is kind of boring kind of forgettable not terrible, but kind of forgettable. Um, the second half of this album feels like different types of ice cream with the same texture, but very different flavors, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's a weird metaphor, but you know what I mean. It's, yeah, it's just ice cream, man. I'm giving Beach Houses 7 a 7.7777777 out of 10. And then up next, we have Mark Koslick. AKA Sun Kill Moon. Sun Kill Moon. Come on, man. Uh, he released a common. That, that album title, yo. Common as Light and Love as Red Valleys of Blood. I think. Uh, really good album. Ended up in my top 20 albums of the year. And another album of his, which is my favorite, Benji. Love that album. And now he's just Mark Koslick. And uh, this is his self titled album so uh yeah it's not as ambitious as sun kill moon the production is not as tight and dense as sun kill moon and uh this is more pe peculiar more artsy even more wordy it's like sun kill moon is getting more wordier and more dense in terms of speaking like it's getting so wordy it's more spoken word and monologues than actual singing that's why this album is a very challenging listen, to be honest. And uh, yeah, this album is full of strange detours and monologues with these minimal instrumentations. The guitars are very minimal. Oftenly, we only hear these words being spoken out once in a while. We get a little high in the instrumentation and it gets very dense and lost and um, very vague as well. And uh, yeah, Sun Kill Moon, Mark Kozlek is basically rambling in all of the songs here, which may be a turnoff for a lot of the listeners, but uh, may also sound pretty good if you, I don't know, change in another perspective. Yes, it's a really hard album to get into, you know, like, of course, it's Sun Kill Moon, none of the tracks here had a resemblance of, of a hook or a chorus. The guitars are not catchy at all. Uh, in fact, they are very low in volume. Uh, they are very lo-fi. And uh, it creates an ambient effect, a very faint ambient effect. And it becomes very tiring after a while. And uh, overall, it's like a storytelling album. It's not really a musical project. It's more a storytelling album. Very, I guess, laid back, chill whatever i'll just tell you guys stories kind of album the vocals by sun kill moon or mark koslek is very forlorn and our track on the track list would be the mark koslek museum which is an introspective track it's also pretty weird uh we have uh mark saying diarrhea over and over again and then there's a part where he had this guitar solo and he's narrating his guitar solo like Telling you who had inspired him with the guitar solo. Like, it's such a weird moment on the album. And then we have uh, My Love For You Is Undying, which is uh, 13 minutes long, I believe. Super wordy, super rambling, e rambly. 
Um, and uh, like towards the end of the track, uh, Mark Kozlik kind of talked about a conversation, an interaction with a girl, and uh, it, it's kind of funny. It's kind of memorable. Also, the track "Weed Whacker" is the closest you'll get to a somewhat resemblance of a hook, but yet not really. Um, but yeah, I love the warm, twangy guitars on this thing. It's um, it's pretty cool. The track Live in Chicago is a really weird track that's extremely hard to get into. We have these bum bum ba ba sounds in the background, vocals in the background. That's pretty odd, but it's, it somehow supports the whole flow of the track as well. Super dense track as well. And overall, um, yeah, uh, Mark also talked about Spotify so many times in the album. It's really weird. Like Spotify is this strong cultural force that brings a lot of pros, but also a lot of cons to the music industry right now. Oh, and overall, it may feel a little forgettable. It may feel a little vague, but uh, it's an extremely thought provoking album and it's really intimate. Yeah, it takes a lot of listens to like this album, but um, it's also a really interesting album. So uh, I'm, I'm giving it a 6 to a 7 out of 10. Next up, we have BTS with uh, Love Yourself. Juan here. I don't know how do you pronounce like It's a it's Chinese, but then it's a Korean album. I had never thought I'd actually review a friggin' K-pop album and it's friggin' BTS. But uh, if you don't know who BTS is, BTS is uh, Bob the Builder. It's it's an anonym for acronym for Bob the Builder, not anonym. The anonym of BTS is STB, which is uh, basically a subway. Subway. Yep, enough with the jokes. The album starts off with uh, intro singularity, um, which sounds kind of cool at first, but uh, I, I just don't like the fake sensual sexy intimate sound on this on this track like uh like this br breathy sound like why are you doing this and the instrumentals are really minimal uh not a big fan but eh it's it's not a terrible track either the next track fake love fake love uh is actually way better and um it's this ultra poppy rap tunes that that's kind of futuristic, and uh, it also has a very emotional edge to it. And this track is about uh, being in a relationship, a romantic relationship, but you're actually sad. And it, it's not a super unique topic, but eh. and then uh, I I, lo I love the production though. It's really slick. It's very glitzy and glitchy, but in a futuristic way. Kind of like it. The next track, the Truth Untold, is um, it's a very slow spacey ballad it's kind of sad emotional and uh, i kind of dig it it's not super great though but it's actually not that bad the next track one three four three four zero why why the fuck is that a song title but you know creativity i'll give it that it's a pretty cutesy cheeky little tropical jazz pop rap track um i like the crisp drums and the rapping is very intimate kind of dig it the next track love maze is also pretty nice pretty fleshed out it has a 2000s dance pop vibe to it i like the jangly guitar the falsetto is really epic and uh, it's about making difficult decisions while you're being in a relationship again uh, another track about love actually this this the entire track list of this album is about love so whatever still it's not as bad as those taylor swift albums um but yeah, it's a it's a pretty pretty nice track, not gonna lie. And Love Maze, like can a song title be more K pop than that? It's such a K pop title. Like Love Maze. Like um, you know, English is not their first language, so they're kinda like pairing simple English vocabularies together. <laughs> 
And then the album goes downhill. First of all, we have Magic Shop, which is a worse track, not gonna lie. The hook is really gross. The EDM factor of this track is really overblown. I'm just not thinking it. People are going insane outside my room right now. Stop. Stop it with the doors. Okay, stop it with the doors. I like the doors. I mean the band, not... Okay, let's continue. The next track, An Pan Man. Uh, it's, it's just a super gross track. The hook is really tedious. The, the beat is kind of kooky. It's kind of ridiculous. Kind of hideous. It's a really awkward track. The topic is kind of weird. Uh, it's, it's about this Japanese um, superhero figure. Bread man, um, yeah, it's a. Uh, I I know about this, cause um, but you know, it's not it's not like a Chinese Hong Kong thing. It's it's a Japan thing. Bread man, like we have Superman, Batman, Spider Man, Iron Man, and you get bread man. Yeah, bread like like bread, edible bread. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the worst track on this album is so what. We get this speedy rapping and the beat tries to be blissful it tries to be super optimistic and uplifting it completely fails because it's kind of awkward it's a little bit too overblown and it's just not for me man the edm is super dramatic on this track like uh, why why and it's a little bit too glitzy glotzy and uh I, I i don't like the i don't like the beat overall but the album ending outro here is a very strong conclusion to the album it's uh emo trap sad rap song and um it's it's pretty intimate it's pretty sweet and uh yeah overall this album although it talks about love too much it's such a common topic but yet um it's not as drab and as dumb dumb minded as it first sounds but um yeah, I, I kind of like how futuristic, how uh, how layered this album is. This album is not as bad as those pop albums in the USA right now. Like, the very sappy EDM Charlie Puth. We have the very fake, edgy Taylor Swift. Uh, we have the very trashy, cheap, cringy chain smokers uh this album is at least a bit better but yeah this album still kind of inconsistent still kind of underwhelming and what do you expect from a k-pop album you know but still um i i like a few tracks on this album here and there not gonna lie and i appreciate music from every country yes and i'm feeling a a light six for the new BTS album. So um, yeah, these are the thoughts on the nine albums that I have just mentioned in the video. Like if you like it, hate if you hate it, and subscribe if you want more. I'm running out of time.